Good afternoon, everyone. This is International Master Robert Jamison from Kids Unlimited in Melbourne, Australia. And today I thought we'd have a little chat about peace activity. Now, what do I mean by peace activity? It's a normal thing. Where do we want to place our pieces? So rooks like open files, knights like outposts, bishops like long diagonals, and so on. So we're trying to activate our pieces. Um, I think it was the British Grandmaster John Nunn who said something along the lines of, so long as my pieces are cooperating, I don't care much about anything else. So we ought to activate our pieces and have them working together towards whatever our plan is. Uh, conversely, we want to give our opponent bad pieces, you know, the bishop locked in behind the pawn chain, the knight in the corner, that sort of thing. All right, so I've chosen a little game here that uh, demonstrates uh, peace activity, probably more than any other I've seen for a while. It was just an online 10 minutes plus increment game I played uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm playing white, let's have a quick look at it. Start off with e4, Rilo Pez. Now, alas, he doesn't play normal move a6 because I love the exchange Lopez where I play uh, bishop takes c6. Now I don't know too much about this normally I just castle and often he takes my pawn. Now it's easy to get the pawn back I can either play uh, rook e1 or probably more aggressively d4. Uh, I chose d4. And he knows his theory because he went back knight d6. So um, I'm attacking his pawn on e5. He's attacking my knight on b5. What move would you play? Let's have a quick think. I think most of my students would uh, play bishop takes knight and then take the pawn on e5. And that's okay. But I decided to take the pawn. Now, many of my students say, Robert, Robert, you silly goose, you've blundered a bishop. Look, knight takes bishop. What are you doing? Well, the question is, have I blundered a bishop? What is White's reply? Does he have a way to get his piece back? And the answer is yes, he does. Play a4 and the knight is trapped. So that's just an example of don't stop your analysis too early. So don't say, oh, I can't play pawn takes e5 because I lose bishop. End of analysis. Look that little bit deeper. Right. Now, they normally play knight d4 here and give me the piece back. But uh, in this case, black played bishop c5. So I take the piece, take in the knight, knight goes to e7. All right, well, so far I'm going quite well. I've castled, I've got one man out and I've got a nice space advantage, but he's going to castle and uh, doesn't have any great weaknesses. Now, I find that one problem with a, a lot of students is they're just sort of coasting along in the opening. They know they have to castle, they know have, they have to develop their pieces, the opponent's not threatening anything. What do they do? Oh, I'll develop this piece. It's probably an okay move. But if you want to be a better player, you have to think about having opportunities to put your opponent under pressure. So rather than just developing a piece, and that's a good move, is there any way you can perhaps threaten something or drive your opponent back or maybe there's a sneaky tactic? So look for moves that are going to put him under more pressure. So for instance, here, I have to choose between uh, knight c3 and rook e1, for instance. Which one would you choose? Some of my students chose rook e1, but knight c3 gives me the chance to put him under more pressure, as we'll see in a second, because he just castles. And now, rather than developing my rook to e1 or my bishop to g5 or something, I put him under pressure with knight e4. So now I'm attacking his bishop. That limits his opportunity. He has to save his bishop. And my knight's in a nice spot in the middle of the board as well. So he runs away. Now again, do I have a move here that can put him under a little bit of pressure? Maybe threaten something. Have a quick look. What would you play for white? 
clearly Black's problem is his bishop is a little bit restricted. So the move to put him under pressure is c4. The threat of c5 and the bishop's trapped. All right, let's imagine for a second you're black. The threat is c5. What do you play? You don't want to lose a bishop, so you have to do something to stop the threat. Have you found a move you like? The best move is probably a move that not many people would play, because one of the things uh, that you need to develop in chess is the skill of understanding like when you're going down, when your position is getting worse. And if you keep trying to hang on to your material or your position and it gets worse and worse and worse and it's too late and you end up losing horribly. It's better if you recognize that there is a problem and bail out at minimal cost. So in this position, Black's problem is his bishop's threatened with being trapped and he hasn't got his pieces developed. So he could solve this problem by giving a port away. He could play d5. Now, if I take en passant, um, he can take. Now, I can win a pawn, sure. But he plays knight here. His bishop's no longer in danger of being trapped. He has active pieces. He's only a pawn down. It's not the end of the world. But instead, he wanted to hang on to his bishop. So he chose c6. Now, of course, my eyes lit up because I thought, you beauty. c5, chase him away. Bishop c7. Now, look at, look at this horrible, horrible hole on d6. It's where I'm controlling it. One day I might put a knight or something nice in there. In the meantime, however, I have another annoying move for him. I can play b6, driving his bishop further back because the pawn is pinned. He can't take it because he'd lose his rook. So the bishop goes further back. So this is great. I've got him all bottled up. How is he going to develop those queenside pieces? Now, I could jump in with knight d6. Probably a reasonably good move, but is there a better move to keep him under pressure? So what I'm thinking about here is, all right, I've got him restricted. I have all the space. He will be trying to uh, undermine my space, undermine my big pawn center. So maybe he's thinking about a move like f6, even though it's opening up his king. So I want to keep him locked up. So my move is bishop g5. Now he can't even play the freeing move d5, because obviously I, I on pass on the knight is going to be in trouble. All right, he says, go away, bishop. Now I look for a little moment at bishop takes pawn, pawn takes bishop, knight f6 check, and it's sort of a promising attack, but I couldn't see anything concrete. So I thought, oh, well, let's just keep it simple. Let's keep the pin. Now the onus is on him to find something to do. So he unpins his queen, looks logical. Now I can jump in knight d6. Now, this is a big problem for him because if he goes back again, can you see a nice tactic for white? Yes, I can just take this bishop. He can't take me with the knight because it's pinned. It has to take with a queen and I've got a free piece and I've still got that lovely outpost on d6. So he decides to take me, which is fantastic. Gets rid of his good in inverted commas bishop. And now look at this piece here. How is he going to get this piece out? And his knight's attacked. So he goes out there attacking my bishop. What would you play as white? Pretty obvious move. He's given us a free developing move, hitting his queen, which cannot go anywhere. So he seems to be up the creek without a paddle. Plays knight takes bishop. All right, now let's pause for a second, because I have three good moves here. I could just take his queen, which I'm sure most juniors would do because they love taking queens. I could take his knight, or I could play rook takes a seven. And if he takes me back, then I'm nearly promoting my 
my B pawn, which has become an A pawn. What to do, what to do? I decided to play knight takes knight. Um, the other moves were all good as well and all winning easily, but this seemed to be the, the cruelest because now look at his queen, it's still attacked. Where does it go? Has to go back again. Now he's attacking my knight. Could play knight f5 or something like that. But I thought the simplest was to take this pawn. All right, now if, if he takes my knight, I just take him and this piece doesn't exist. I'm just a rook up and I'm controlling the open file. Disaster. If he takes here and tries to stop me queening, well, I just come here and I'm queening anyway. So another disaster. So he runs away and hides. My move, my knight is attacked. Think of a very cruel move. I went here. And uh, he resigned. I wonder why. Could it be because his pieces can barely move at all? Look at this rook. Look at this bishop. Look at this queen. The only move he could possibly play is here, and then I just go here, which is pretty traumatic. And then knight coming up here. It's a total disaster. So basically, my opponent was really hopeless at activating his pieces. He had the chance to play d5, give me a pawn back, get his pieces out, but he was trying to hang on to everything without giving away material, and it just got worse and worse for him. So I hope that's been an interesting lesson for you, and you can apply that uh, idea of peace activity and restricting your opponent's pieces in your own game. See you next video.